everyone, and welcome to the new world of work. Hello, hello. My name's Kat Breet. You're listening to the new world of work where we teach people how to get more money, freedom, and fun out of work. And one thing, one aspect of that, getting you maximum control and opportunity in your career is taking control of your personal brand and your reputation out there. And so on Tuesday of this week, I talked about what is a personal brand and why should I care? Today, I am so excited to have a special guest. Luke Doubler is joining us. Now, Luke is the founder of Recruiter Central. Io. He is a contributor to Real Food Minnesota. He's a very busy guy. He's got four kids, a fabulous wife, um, and he runs three or four companies. So he's the founder again of Real Recruiter Central. He's a contributor to Real Food RN. He helped his daughter launch Ellie and Her Chickens.com. And he's also a partner in State Storage Group. Uh, he's been a keynote speaker all over the world at SourceCon, uh, tons of recruiter conferences, and dozens of trade, professional, and development con conferences. Um, so again, he's, he's blessed to be a father of four, proud Christian, um, and he believes that every single person on the planet, and he's traveled a lot, um, has a beautiful God-given purpose. And he wants to help you achieve your fullest potential. And believe it or not, personal branding is a piece of that. Now, a little fun fact before I bring Luke Doubler on. Um, Luke grew up near Walnut Grove, Minnesota. And if any of you know who Laura Ingalls Wilder is and were a fan of Little House on the Prairie when you were little, he grew up right there. So, um, Luke, good morning and welcome. Wow. Thanks for having me on. It's a beautiful, glorious day today in Minnesota. Thanks. Yeah, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of folks uh, joining us today, which is great. We've got Alex, Roger, Rebecca, Janine, Robin, Javier from Puebla, Mexico. Uh, so a nice audience this morning. They are so excited to learn from you. Uh, so first, tell us about Ellie and her chickens. Well, so I'm blessed to have four kids, my wife and I, and I think it's important to introduce your kids to commerce early. And um, the future is technology, and uh, you want to give her a platform to be herself. And so, if you can introduce her to coding, writing, uh, a business as soon as possible, uh, she gets that mindset of what being a true entrepreneur is. So, uh, teaching is really a community effort, and uh, parents play the largest part in it. And so, we thought, well, this is going to be her ongoing project, her thing. And um, you know we have her teaching. We're, we're code, teaching her to code basic HTML, writing pictures. Uh, it's her business, and we we predict she's easily going to be able to pay for her college uh, in by by the time she's a junior. So um, there's that. So uh, and how old is she? Passionate. How old is she right now? Uh, Ellie is ten. It's, um, it's brilliant. Um, I I wanted to lead with that. I mean, first of all, I've had a ton of people say you got to meet Luke, and I'm you know, thrilled that we finally connected, but um, I went out there and checked you out. And I, that's the thing that really just popped for me as a parent and an entrepreneur um, and the new world of work. Every single one of us needs to have at least a side hustle, if not um, a business that we're running. So um, to all you parents out there, when your child comes home in the third grade and wants to sell something at school, embrace it. Um, but on to the topic of today, SEO. How did you get into SEO? Yeah, so real quick story. I, I was a teacher for a year. I uh, went into corporate America and I was a recruiter for places like Cargill, Target. Uh, my wife, um, she was a registered nurse at places like uh, Alina in uh, downtown Minneapolis. And we really wanted to make an impact. She wanted to help people. I wanted to help people. And as a nurse, she loved what she was doing, but she felt she could reach a bigger audience by really adjust, addressing, you know, what is the it thing? Why are you sick? What is going on in your life? And uh, what Western medicine is doing is fine, but it really, really addresses the, the problem. You know, why are you sick? And so she said, well, I want to really, I feel my purpose is to help people. And so I am going to start my blog. I am going to talk about, you know, holistic cures, natural medicine, real food being a real part of everybody's diet and an education piece there. She started part-time, still a full-time nurse. Within a year, she was able to supersede her nursing salary. Now she has uh, one of the largest blogs in the, in the health food industry, realfoodrn.com, health and healing the way nature intended. She has a big team that she leads and it's uh, become a booming industry for her. Um, and so I'm a huge believer in 
you know, you have to wake up every day and find your purpose. You're never really going to know exactly what it is, but you have to be asking yourself constantly. And as you're driving to work one morning, you're like, well, is this why God put me here? Am I truly happy? Am I making an impact? Well, that's we live in the best country in the world. This is the one place you can do that. Uh, find your purpose. Ask yourself constantly, what are your gifts? And, and, and set those goals. Absolutely. So um, SEO came into your world, uh, helping her grow that blog. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if you look at a blog and how to monetize a blog, a blog is basically a, uh, a sign along a freeway, if you will. It's, a, it's, an, it's an advertising piece. And the more eyes you have on your blog, the better. That, that's your audience. That's your traffic. And when you have a significant amount of engaged individuals looking at your stuff, there's a lot of things you can monetize. You can do direct audio. You can do direct um, advertising. Um, you can have sponsored ads. Um, you can have companies paid for pay for you to write stuff, blog posts and reviews. Um, uh, it, it goes on and on. I mean, we have 40, 50 revenue streams on that alone. And so uh, it, 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 it's a marketing game. You know, our hook, if you will, our product is a value add. It, it's providing value to your audience. It's an education piece for free. And in return, you know, you're looking at our stuff. And so I love that we're we're starting with entrepreneurship, and then we'll we'll talk about recruiters. Uh, your your main business is Recruiter Central, and SEO is an incredibly important tool for recruiters. And today you're coming on to talk to the individual about how to use all your tricks of the trade as a recruiter um, and a business owner uh, for individuals. But um, don't know where I was going with that. But yeah, let's flip to recruiting. Yeah. So recruiters are now digital marketers uh, is really what we have become. And yes, recruiting is still a part of it. But when I look for inspiration, you know, I have a lot of people I greatly respect, respect in the recruiting world and I love and I, they have great stuff. But as a recruiter, I look for the digital marketers for inspiration, for ideas, for technical guidance. And um, that's really kind of where the innovation is coming. And if you look at some of the leading companies out there, you're seeing new jobs come about like digital marketing ambassador, social community leader. Uh, they're still recruiters, uh, but they are using a different uh, fishing lure, uh, for example. Recruiting is evolving unlike ever before and faster than ever before. And it's dizzying just trying to stay on top of all the recruiting trends. And um, if you look at recruiters who you know post a job and harvest the people coming from it, that's just a small portion of what it means to be a recruiter. To be a recruiter really is you know the sourcing, the reaching out, the branding part of it as well. And that's really where you know I feel that being a blogger, having my wife, living in the blogosphere where you have access to those technical innovations that can help fuel recruiting. Fabulous. Um, so social branding, why mm -hmm. is it so important for all of us in the new world of work? Mm -hmm. You got you constantly need to brand yourself one. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an evolution thing. And if you look at the people who are leaders, people that you may think of as uh, inspiration or that you go to, uh, that you see as subject matter experts in your field. Well, you know, how did they get there? How did they become that? Well, they've created an amazing brand. One, they're constantly adding value. They're creating content that really make you want to constantly follow them. Um, a lot of times you see these people as CEOs, you see these people as company leaders, you see these people as innovators. What they're doing, it takes a lot of work. Um, they're building their brand, but the number one thing that they're doing is they're constantly adding value. What is your brand and how are you constantly adding value to that brand? So how do you know if you're staying current with your professional skill set? Yeah, that's the million dollar question that's ever evolving. So um, some of the, and I want to talk about mentors later on, but the best mentors that I've ever talked to take some time each day for themselves. They listen, they constantly learn. And so as a recruiter in this space, you know, you got to take a few days for self-development. Uh, subscribe to a couple of blogs, follow a couple of leaders, see what the emerging trends are, see what the, the best companies are doing. Find someone that is smarter and better than you are and <laughs> attach yourself to them. Uh, listen, listen aggressively to what they're doing um, and become that. So um, you have some favorite mentors and I'd love for you to share who do you listen to and who do you follow? Yeah. And so 
you know, on the technical side, I love Neil Patel, and I'm going to share a couple of his um, uh, stuff here a little bit. I like him so much because, one, he's got a great technical brain, but he listens um, unlike anybody else, and he sometimes is overly technical, but, you know, he, he he's an all nerd about this stuff, and he lives his life for it. So there's definitely that. I love... Um, I love Don Miller and the story brand. If you um, if you haven't read Donald Miller and story brand, and if you have some sort of business that you run that has a brand to it, uh, which would, should be applying to everybody, he created a company called story brand and story brand really is a way to simplify your brand and make decisions uh, easier for the consumer. Uh, he's an expert on understanding. Like when you look at a website, like, what should be your action items, not making it too busy, what is your message, clarifying your question. Again, Donald Miller story brand is something that we use a lot whenever we create a website um, and really making your message much more succinct to your audience, more specifically your buyers. Well, and uh, I started reading that thanks to your recommendation and in my coaching circle for consultants yesterday, we talked about that. And one of my favorite moments is that one of our uh, consulting clients said, oh my gosh, she said, it's like Starbucks. And she spent the next 20 seconds telling us the name of the founder of Starbucks, his childhood story, why he started Starbucks and the mission behind the company. And I just thought it was such a great example of the power of figuring out what is your God-given gift. What's that story? I talk about finding your fire. It it really, it's so much more than just a differentiator. Here we have a business owner in Minnesota who's selling the benefits of a Seattle-based company because he nailed his story and he shared it. Mm -hmm. um, so um, tools, uh, why don't you share some tools with us? Okay. So everybody has a brand, like it or not. And you think you know what your brand is, but it really kind of depends on whatever others think your brand is. And um, to be your brand, you have to define your brand. And to define your brand, there's a lot of great tools you can use. Uh, obviously, is LinkedIn. Um, but uh, keeping in mind the story brand, uh, keeping in mind the, the that are out there, um, you know, ask yourself, what is your brand? What would your peers call you? How do you define yourself? And when you look at your LinkedIn profile, that is step one, but your LinkedIn profile should scream your brand. What is my brand? What am I good at? What's my purpose? What am I here to do? And then ultimately, and most importantly, what problem am I looking to solve? How am I looking to monetize on that? And so when you look at your profile, your LinkedIn profile, and I would suggest this is a exercise that Donald Miller talks about, you know, have someone else say like, what is your brand? What do they see when they look at you? What do they see when they Google you? That's another big part of it. Google yourself. When you look at your LinkedIn profile within five to 10 seconds, you should kind of have a snapshot of what this person is all about. Is it overly wordy? Is it all over the place? What, you know, why am I engaging with this? What's in it for me, your potential consumer, to follow you, to engage you. Why? And so your LinkedIn profile should screen that right away. Um, you know, it's never perfect and it probably evolves all the time. Uh, it's something that you should be very keen uh, about and then you should speak about it. And so when you have your digital brand and you've defined what your brand is, you should always be adding value to that brand. Now that doesn't mean just posting and reposting stuff. We're going to talk about the technical SEO components of that here in a little bit. But you know, you don't have to be some crazy expert developing these amazing blog posts. Um, you know, be your brand. Let's say you are a I don't know software engineer. Provide value in software engineering. Um, you know, here's a cool thing that X company is doing. Here's a language that I picked up recently. If you're good in your field, you're probably already doing it a little bit or a lot. Um, if you're a professional, you're always constantly learning something, talk about it, show it, uh, share it. Um, if you're doing it, it's probably valuable for you, so share it. Um, and not only share it on your LinkedIn profile, um, you know, SEO yourself by connecting LinkedIn to Twitter, uh, connect it to Facebook. Um, you know, don't have your brand as being a software engineer and then you're talking about um, something completely irrelevant in the next post that waters down your brand. Stick to brand, you know, 
provide value, um, be authentic, and have fun with it. And so um, tools, it'd be really, because we're coming up here, this time just flies, it's almost uh, 8.15. I'd love for you to share some of your favorite tools, and then I'd like to open it up and take some questions from our live audience. Hello to Daniela in Virginia. I grew up in Virginia near DC, so I just have to give a shout out to her. Welcome. And uh, so why don't you share a couple of tools and then we'll take some questions from all of you. So start bringing them on. Okay, so the first thing about SEO is find a mentor if you don't know them. And so can you see my screen right now? Yes. Okay, so the first thing I like to look at, like let's say I am a recruiter. Uh, listen to what some of the major platforms are telling you. So I think of the best recruiters that I know and I'm kind of old school and I love Glenn Cathy. Um, I learned about as, you know, I was a sourcing nerd right from away. So find a couple people who are doing it better than you, who are smarter than you, and see what they're doing. So like you look at, and this is basic stuff, look at what Glenn's doing. You know, he's constantly adding value. He's, you know, he's quite busy. He's got, you know, 43,000 followers on LinkedIn, which is quite a bit. You know, he's adding value with keyword rich content. Okay, so rather than just saying that, you know, a lot of nonsensical words here, um, you know, he's putting a lot of value added keywords in his stuff. So digital, strategy, um, ethical AI, chat box, blockchain, um, all words that he wants to be associated. So think of this space as valuable real estate, not to only tell a story, but to leverage SEO to load it up with keywords. Okay, again, I'm going to say that. This is all very valuable space for keywords. So tell your story, but make it full of actionable words that are relevant to your brand. And so, you know, he's always adding valuable content. He speaks a lot. Not saying that you have to speak a lot, but just anything you can add a value to who you think your audience is and you need to find your audience, that's something he does. And so, you know, pick a two or three people that you look up to and admire. Look at what they're saying and emulate that. Okay. Another couple of tools that I want to share is there's a couple of great tools out there. Neil Patel is one I talked about. So for example, on a blog, to get a trending type blog post, a lot of people think you might just, well, what are people thinking about? What are people talking about? I'm going to guess. Well, we don't guess. We look at what people are actually talking about, what's trending. And then we basically take those keywords and include it in our article. So for example, let's say you're writing a story about interviewing. Uh, what you do is you look at you know what keywords are out there. What are people searching on Google? Because 80, let's see, what is this exact same? As of July 2020, 87% of the market share is using Google to access the internet. And so all these words that are used on Neil Patel's um, tool, his keyword generating tool, are relevant keywords that people are using right now. So basically, here's a list of things that you need to include in your article. Um, you know, you don't have to make the article about that, but it needs to be included in there because that's what the people are searching on. Google also has a tool, and this is free. It's uh, their keyword planner tool. And um, with their keyword planner tool, you're able to uh, break it down by area. But let's say you wanted to, oh, I'm just gonna guess here, um, write a story about interviewing. Um, uh, Google's keyword planner will tell you what's trending, um, what keywords are people using, uh, recommendations that you can use. You can also define it by location and what's trending and what locations. You're gonna see that's varying quite a bit. So let's say your target audience is, I don't know, Iowa. You click in Iowa and see what's trending in Iowa, what are people searching in Iowa, and the block of words, the group of words that are coming up, that's your content. That's what you're gonna focus on as someone who's adding value to your network. Those are the two biggest tools that I want to share. Nice. Um, and so once again, Google offers a lot of these tools for free. Mm -hmm. um, Neil Patel, you guys, it's unbelievable. Neil Patel has put together a brilliant, I think it's a seven week course for free. Mm -hmm. He's very smart. This is something for you to think about if you are a business owner. Um, he, he's literally giving away that course away for free because he knows that a lot of people are going to go through his course and they're going to say, this is unbelievable, but I don't really want to do it on my own. I want to hire Neil's uh, agency to do this for me. And so it's a brilliant client acquisition tool, but it's also a very good gift to the world. Uh, so Luke, there's a common theme here. Luke keeps talking about giving, giving, sharing, sharing. If you really want to become an industry leader, you want to be the number one person that people think of, 
when they have a problem that you can solve, you've got to become a generous networker. You've got to become a generous content sharer of either your own original content or sharing other people's. So uh, wonderful. So let's see if we've got questions from anybody today um, that you can answer. I, I do have a, so while we're waiting for people to send questions in, Luke, I've got a question for you. Um, we've talked a lot about uh, business owners. I want to focus on individual candidates right now. I mean, unemployment globally is through the roof. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people that have been furloughed, laid off, or they're worried about a layoff. And you are, first and foremost, a recruiter, um, and you run an executive search firm. Um, a question for the individuals, and then I want to talk to companies about when and why they should use a search firm. So let's talk to individuals. Um, mm -hmm. as when you're hunting for top talent for your clients, what do you want to see when you find somebody on LinkedIn, for instance? Mm -hmm. So you have to understand how recruiters are, are finding you first and foremost. Um, they're entering keywords, they're hitting search and, um, you know, you're showing up. Um, think about it as what, what is your audience as a job seeker? Well, your audience is the employer. And I, I get all sorts of requests of, you know, what do you think of my resume? What do you think of my cover letter? You know what? It doesn't really matter what I say. It matters who's hiring you. Who's, who, it, matters, it matters of the person who's going to hire you. That's what matters. And so the, what you would say about that is take a look at their job posting. Um, that's what they're advertising for. Become that. And so if they're looking for six years uh, of advanced ex Microsoft Excel experience, well, Boom, first line, that's me, you know, I'm, I'm that. Uh, SEO yourself to their job description, become their job description. And you know, you always have to tell it always is and don't make things up, but you know, showcase that. Um, so it, it doesn't matter what someone else thinks of your cover letter or job or your resume. Um, reflect yourself by emulating their job description into your resume, into your LinkedIn profile. So for example, if you are say a recruiter and you want to be the best recruiter you can be, uh, one thing that you should constantly constantly be doing, and I'm going to share my screen on this one, is, is Googling uh, jobs um, out there. So um, jobs in, and I'm sharing my screen again. And another evolution that's happening, Amazon or Google has quickly taken over the job Board world because they are SEOing or putting their job posting first and so Google has a job board now and indeed is growing and you know career builder and monster kind of fading away but you know if I were to be a stock purchaser in this area I would buy Google stock over indeed because one they, they show up first and then what you do is you take a look at you know some of the what you perceive as being some of the best employers in the area and look at what ATS they're looking at. Um, you know, what are the skills and values that they uh, put a lot of emphasis on? Uh, what are those activities? And, you know, incorporate that into your LinkedIn profile. And if you don't have it, learn it. Um, listen aggressively to the market around you evolving and, 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 and get on top of those trends. Great. Okay. So that's for the candidate side. And we've got a great question from Heather here. Uh, hello, Heather. She's a business owner. She's been on her own now for 25 years. She does brilliant crisis communication, executive communication. And she would like to know, she said, first of all, thank you, Luke. This is very helpful. Do you have suggestions around key titles for articles that might go viral? Mm -hmm. And so that's the trick. And there's a lot of competition, but you got to have fun with it. So at the end of the day, and it was Heather. Yes. And you know who's the one that's going to be paying your bills? Who is the person that will would be willing to pay money for your services? Think about that. Define that. Um, speak to that. And so use the tools that I taught that, that I shared with you. Neil Patel's tool, um, the Google Keyword tool, and everything you do add value to who you're speaking to constantly. And so one of the reasons why so many companies have blogs, so one of the reasons why so many companies have Instagram pages, one of the reasons why so many companies have LinkedIn company pages, Facebook company pages, it's all SEO value. Um, a blog post carries so much SEO value because Google says it carries so much value because they love organic content that people are naturally clicking on, that has lots of in and out links, that has a number of things. And so I'm gonna show you this real quick. So every time you hit 
enter in Google, and this changes almost every day. Look at all these things. Google looks at over 200 things, bam, and that's what determines the search algorithm and search outcome. Google is constantly messing around with this in a, an attempt to make a more relevant product. Google wants to be as best as it can, but again, the vast majority of people use Google to access the internet. Google holds all the keys. So you need to understand a little bit about how Google search works, one, and then two, understand your audience and then talk to them, add value to them as much as you possibly can to try to drive value to whatever it is that you're selling. Fantastic. Um, and then let's see here. Heather says, for SEO, can we get specific with our audience? For example, a keyword mm -hmm. from a CEO may be different from a keyword from a recruiter. I think I actually think you just addressed that with her. Um, so does the content in the blog need to be full of keywords? Yeah. So again, there's so many rules and regulations and, and, and there's a lot of articles out there about, you know, it should be between 250 and 500 words. It should have so many in and out links. It should have so many pictures on it and a certain size. Um, if you're going to be endeavoring in having a blog, you need to take a moment to understand some of the basic things that Google looks at uh, when determining SEO. That's like number one. Otherwise, you're basically talking over here and no one's listening. And so it really does pay dividends if you are going to spend time, all that time writing a good blog post. It could be the best blog post in the world, but if it's not showing up anywhere, it doesn't matter. So you have to understand the rules of the game. Google, it's Google's game and you need to play by their game. And so that's why people like Neil Patel are so important because they listen very well and translate what they're saying. And so um, you know, listen very well to some of the basic rules, understand um, just how kind of how it all fits together. I like to give the analogy of, you know, every time you write a blog post and you connect it to one or two or three or the four things, you're increasing your spider web in cyberspace. And the bigger your spider web is, the more complex you know, the more pieces it has to it, uh, the better chance it's going to be caught. It's going to catch you, the cyberspace traveler in, in space. And so um, make that as big as possible by knowing the rules. Well, and back to what you said a little bit earlier, you said one of the most important things is when you write a brilliant blog or article, when you're trying to figure out how to title it, that's when you absolutely go out and look at what's trending right now today in Google so that you can make sure that your title has got, you know, a hot keyword uh, there. So that's just an idea that you shared. Yeah. So, so like his, his tool does that. So here are some of the best uh, trending articles right now. And, you know, I, I've met some of the greatest writers in the world that their stuff falls flat. It's too wordy. It's too long. You know, just because you think it's good doesn't mean your audience thinks it's good. So like look here with the stuff. It, it, again, it doesn't matter what you think it matters what your audience thinks. So, um, you know, that's why, again, the articles that are trending, look at those. They're going to probably be shorter than you think. They're going to probably be very vivid. Uh, they're going to have a ton of links. So look at like some of these trending links, 452 links. They have a lot of backlinks. Um, they're tabbed really well. Or, or there's a lot of technical pieces to it that go into making a great article. Um, so like what I'm saying is like you don't, don't think you need to make all these great articles. Um, what you can do is leverage it. So share it. That's why sharing it is so important. Talk about why it's so important. Uh, don't just share it and leave it there. Give uh, very specific reasons as to why you're sharing it and why your audience should view it. Again, you don't need to get in the uh, business of writing or speaking to be an expert here, but you do need to get in the business of knowing when to share relevant content that may not be yours, but you need to speak about why it's important. So Luke, as we wrap things up this morning, I wanna respect your time and everybody else that's with us today. Um, I wanna talk for just a moment about uh, search firms. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, It is so easy right now for people to look at the market and say, oh, I don't need to work with a search firm. You know, Candidates are dropping off the, the branches. Um, and you, you certainly could look at it like that, but let me just quickly tell everybody, I've been in recruiting and consulting for 22 years. And when I, the first time I talked to Luke, I said, so tell me about your business. And he, in the first two minutes, lifted up something that I've never heard another search firm do. And it is his search uh, strategy, his sourcing strategy that he puts together for every single client and he shares with them. And then he sent me an example and it really blew me away that he, he's got that plan and he executes on it. So um, Luke, you tell me, when should a company turn to you for help versus 
waiting for their own internal recruiters to find the right talent? Sure. So first and foremost, if you're a candidate, don't ever pay a recruiting agency to place you. It doesn't really work that way. Um, there's some of those out there. Don't don't do that. Uh, one. Um, it's an interesting time right now. And in the agency, you're going to see agencies going belly up left and right. And we've lost 70% of our business in a week. I mean, it was a punch in the gut. Um, you, at Recruiter Essential, we fill, we fill difficult jobs. And so when you work with a search firm like ours, we work on business critical, strategically important roles that require that next level of, of digging, of searching, of finding. And so when you work with a company like mine, Recruiter Central, we put together a sourcing strategy up front and says, you know, here are the performers, here are the companies that are doing it well, here's the compensation information, here's the diversity trends, um, you know, here's where they are up front. And it creates a much deeper dialogue with the hiring le hiring leader to really understand what is the goal of this job. Not just filling a job, but what do you want to accomplish by filling this? Um, it makes the hiring leader look more competent because they're able to say with confidence, you know, Here's where we're looking and here's why. Here are the companies that are doing it better than us. In recruiting, we have the best job in the world because we get to sample what everybody's doing and you know, we know who's doing it best and it's awesome. When, um, when you're sitting inside a company, sometimes you don't get that window into, into the business world. And with that sourcing strategy, I right at the beginning, you share. You know. Well, and I tell you, you know, one thing that very few people understand, they, they actually don't understand it unless they've been an agency recruiter. That's really my opinion on this. Um, most hiring managers don't understand how critical it is to spend the time up front with your recruiter, clearly defining ideal candidate, why, what are you looking for, so that they can go out and, and hunt for the right person. The other thing that's really important, you help clients understand their competitors, compensation trends, so that they can nail it up front, so that when they find that number one candidate and they want them so badly, they actually accept their offer. This is another mistake a lot of companies are making in this market. They think they have the pick of the litter and that they don't have to put on their A game during the hiring process. And I'm telling you, top talent always have the pick of the litter and they're going to turn you down if you don't have your ducks in a row during your hiring process. And a firm like Luke's Recruiter Central can really help you with that. So anyway, mm -hmm. hey, we came on today to talk about SEO and I want to say thank you so much, Luke. You've, you know, you always open my eyes up to a couple of new things. This is great. Thank you to everybody who joined us. You can find Luke at recruitercentral.io. Is that right? Yes. So pop up Luke's uh, website their LinkedIn profile. They can follow you. They can connect with you. They can find all of your fabulous businesses. You can follow uh, his wife at realfoodrn.com and Ellie and her chickens. Why not inspire your child to become an entrepreneur by following Ellie and her chickens? Um, thank you so much, everybody. Have a fantastic day. Bring your friends. We're here every Tuesday and Thursday. We've got some great guests coming on in the next couple of weeks. Have a wonderful weekend.